All right, let's try this again. Sorry guys, my Facebook froze up. I'll wait for a few people to jump on again. So we're gonna talk about a guy that's been in my program. He signed up right after, or right, yeah, the day after Growth County. Hey, all right guys, sorry about that. The phone messed up. So jump on and we're about to get started. Jinwoo, what's up? Tim, Kyle, Claudia, what's going on? He's all my students. Bill, what's going on? Dave Cousins, Clay, what's up, my brother? Hope you're doing well. Hope those babies are doing good. Jordan, what's up, man? Jordan's from New Orleans. Shout out where you from. I um, wanna, wanna know where you from. Give me some likes, give me some love, give me some shares, guys. I'm gonna have a student on who did over 50 grand in the first two months in my program. He's from Canada, he's a Canadian born guy. He's an absolute killer. We call him the Canadian killer, so. I'm about to bring him on, but uh, what's up, Nick, Donna, what's going on? Like I said, please share, please invite. No days off, Dave, what's up, my brother? Um, Sean, I appreciate that, Sean. Patrick, what's up, my brother? We need to catch up, check on your deal flow. Yo, yo, what's up, Bill? All right, so let's bring on, I wanna bring on a student of mine. This guy is an absolute stud. He's from Windsor, Canada. His name is Ben, let me make sure I'm pronouncing this right. Mirasu, I know I'm slaughtering your name, Ben. I'm sorry. I know you're watching me, um, but let's bring Ben on here. He, he's uh, so now it says, "Hey, I'm new to your feet. Awesome. Hey, look, we're gonna drop some golden nuggets on real estate wholesaling and just real estate in general. And I want you guys to get as much value as you possibly can because we got we got people killing in my program, absolutely crushing it. We got guys that are 24 years old making 20, 30 grand a month." We got this guy, Ben, that I'm about to bring on. He made 50 grand in his first two months in the program. So, Kyle, that's awesome. Erica, what's going on? All right, let's, Nico, what's up? Let's bring on, let's see where Ben's at. Um, let's see, search. Ben. All right, let's invite him on right now. Let friends to watch. Let's see. Ben, if you on, I don't know if you can, uh, what's up, Justin? Jump on real quick, Ben. Let's see. Ben, Ben, let's see if we could uh, find Ben here. I don't even think he's on yet. I told him to jump on. There he is. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Awesome, Charlotte. I appreciate that. Love the online program so far. Hey, what's going on, Chris? Yo, yo, Ben. Ben, before I massacre your name anymore, please pronounce it for me again. I think I just slaughtered your name again. Dude, it was nasty. It was like roadkill, brother. <laughs> so y'all can call me Ben Murison or Mureshan if you're inclined, but Murison is good. It's like Pearson, but Murison. Nice. Okay, yeah, I really screwed that up. So... Ben is one of my students. Student, student. So, Ben, how long have you been in the program? And uh, tell us a little bit about you, where you're from, how old you are, and, you know, your story, man. We want to know how the hell you made $50,000 in the first two months in my program. Yes, sir. I'm just driving home right now in the Beamer, so the wife's waiting on me. She knows I'm driving and talking, so hope I can get no ticket. But So here's, <laughs> here's the deal, man. I'm 33 years old now. Um, you know, I've been doing real estate for about 12 years now. I started when I was, uh, when I was uh, you know, in my early 20s. And um, I've been with you now for about two months. And uh, I always knew about wholesaling, like I had an idea, but I didn't really know how to put it all together until I kind of met you and you gave me some solid, solid nuggets. I mean, I'd call them bombs. You know, Bradley ain't got nothing on you, man. <laughs> so the bombs you gave me really kind of catapulted me into the next level so I could start doing these things. Uh, really efficiently. So, um, you know, I've done, um, I'm just coming up on my fourth deal in two months. I've done uh, just over 50 grand here in wholesaling. Uh, first deal I did was uh, 19,000 bucks. Second deal I did was uh, 10,000 bucks. Two days ago, I locked in a deal for 28,000 freaking dollars minus commissions was 23 grand. I'm sure some of you guys saw that video. So dude, it's, it's on fire, man. Canada is cold as hell. But I'm on fire, man. It's good. <laughs> I like that. Cool. Canada's cold, but Ben's on fire, guys. So, guys, this is not the norm. I don't want to sit here and, and talk like, you know, this is an average student. This is not. I mean, this 
for, for somebody in my, in my program to do 50 grand in two months is pretty extraordinary. Um, so that's why I wanted to bring him on because I want to know what this guy did. You know, I want to know what, what makes him tick, what, what got him to the point where obviously, I, I mean, I know it helps that Ben had a, a real estate background to begin with. That definitely helped. Ben's flipped a lot of houses, but he didn't know the wholesale play. So the guy's already a killer. But he got information that, you know, he – and by the way, guys, who's sharing and who's inviting right now? Please share and invite. We're going to get some, drop some nuggets on this on this show. So, you know, and give me some love, by the way. Give me some – tap that heart button, that, that little hit. Hit that button real quick and give me some love. So, But Ben, guys, is uh, – you know, Ben came in. He talked to me at Growth Con. He's like, look, Chris, I'm flipping houses. I saw you, your program. I think I'm working too hard. I, I think I need to do – I think I need to get into wholesaling. I said, dude, I don't think you work. So I know you working too hard, you know? So the guy <laughs> comes in, the guy comes and I said, man, why you want to work so hard, dude? Why you want to flip houses? I mean, nothing against flipping houses, but that's, you know, that's, that's not where, I mean, not, not you can't make a lot of money flipping houses. I know people, a lot of people make a lot of money, but wholesaling is such a niche business. It's the art of, you know, capturing equity and flipping contracts, right? So when, when Ben came on, he was already doing deals, you know, on, on the flip side. And he has a lot of, he does a lot of mortgages also, but he came on, I knew he was going to kill it. So he comes on and like within the first couple of weeks, he's like, dude, I already lost. Like, I don't know what I've been doing. I don't know why I've been flipping houses. Like this is so much funner than, than flipping houses. Yep. So ben, why don't you tell him what, what you've been doing the past couple of years, how many houses you flipped and then versus now that you're, you're wholesaling. Like what, what's, what's the difference between like, what do you see now from being on both sides? Uh, actually, uh, before I bring that up, I see my boy Roger James from Windsor, Ontario is on this call. So what up, Roger? This dude and I went to high school. He's now a realtor. So this dude can vouch for real. He knows what I'm about. We actually live, we both live in LaSalle, man. So he's like five minutes from my house. So what up, Roger? So, but um, so I've been flipping houses here for, you know, about six, seven years. I got a reno crew. Uh, we got a renovation background. And... Um, Sorry, I'm just backing up into my garage and trying to hit my motorcycle, my Mercedes, and my Beamer in the same shot. Sorry, dude. <laughs> Sorry, what was the question? Hit me up again, please. Yeah, so tell us, being that you've, uh, you know, you flipped houses and you didn't really know the wholesale play and you, you met me and now you're wholesaling. You made 50 grand in less than two months, right at two months. Tell us, you know, what's your perspective now, you know, wholesaling versus flipping houses and, you know, how that's, what is your whole what is your whole viewpoint now on wholesaling versus flipping? Well, uh, flipping houses is fine. It just takes a long time. And there's a lot of value there because we help a lot of people in, in our business. And, you know, we got a mortgage company and, and we provide a lot of value there for folks. But when it comes to wholesaling, if you're looking for just, you know, developing a business, uh, it's, it's night and day, the, the value that you can do and the speed because speed gets the deal. So if you're a 10X fan, if you're a growth card, uh, Grant Cardone fan, you know that it's all about you know speed to the deal. So if you're trying to get the deals done, you want to be able to move in and out as quickly as possible and leverage your time before anything else. Yeah. Now, Ben, would would you say this is true that if you'd have got into wholesaling before you got into flipping, you'd probably be a lot further on? Because I I know that's been true for me. When I first got into real estate, I, I started flipping houses and then I got into buy and hold. Then I found out about wholesaling. But if I would have started with wholesaling, I think I would have been a lot further along because once I started wholesaling, I was able to capture more deals. Heav way more heavily discounted because I, I learned how to market, right? And I learned how to get better quality deals versus trying to find deals in MLS. Wouldn't you agree that everybody should start with wholesaling if you're going to get into real estate? Absolutely. Anybody who wants to get into real estate should start with wholesaling because a couple of things. Number one, it doesn't require, you know, capital up front if you know what you're doing. So if you're in the hustle wholesale program and you learn the methodology, you're not going to need capital to do a wholesale deal. And number two, you can provide value to other people in wholesale because everybody wants a deal. Like right now in our, uh, you know, in Canada, the market's so hot that there's really not a whole lot of opportunities here on the MLS to even buy homes. And I see some realtors in a group here and a whole bunch of my friends, and they'll tell you that it is tough on the market if you're trying to get access to properties at a fair price or under market value. So you're really providing a lot of service to people if you can wholesale properties to other people. You're giving them a lot of value in that they can get a home at a much lower price than what they would typically be able to get, right? So, right. yeah, I, I think everybody should start with wholesaling, and it's going to be the easiest barrier of entry if you're trying to do any kind of flipping, um, you know, mortgaging or otherwise. So I would definitely agree with that statement for sure. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you would definitely agree that the deals are not on MLS. You know, that's when I first got into real estate, I was chasing deals in MLS. I thought I was cool because I was buying deals at 80 cents on the dollar. When I now that I'm a wholesale, I'm buying deals at 40, 50. I bought a deal today for eleven thousand dollars, by the way. That's probably that I'm not going to wholesale that I'm going to keep. That's probably worth about 25, 30 grand. I got it for it's probably worth about 35. I got it for 11 grand, guys. You know, and I, I can get 650 a month in rent. I could probably wholesale it for you know 20 grand and make a quick nine grand, but I can make that almost in one year in rent. So it's but I would never better do that if I didn't have a pipeline of wholesale deals. So yeah, you wholesaling. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I would just advise you to get started there. I mean, the other the other methods they have merit. Like there's a lot of work involved. You know, flipping houses is great. There's there's nothing wrong with with those other activities. But if you really want to get into real estate, I don't see a better option than starting with the wholesaling program. If, if you've got somebody like you who can teach it in a tangible way and get people started and give them the information that's going to help them move forward, then it really is the best opportunity. Yeah, I agree. So let's be honest, Ben. I want you to tell us, man, what are you doing every day to, to, do, you know, to, to start off in a program? I, I haven't had, I'll be honest, I haven't had a student do 50 grand in two months in the first two months. Tell me what's the secret. What are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Tell us what that looks like. Tell us what your day looks like to, to better do those numbers so fast. Well, for all you Grant Cardone 10X fans, it requires a ton of activity. So you're not just going to get up and do 50 grand your first month unless you're really willing to put in eight, 10 hours a day. Like you really got to grind this out if you want it to happen, right? Yeah. No one's just going to give you their equity, their home. Like you got to find people that you can help them solve their problems and then they'll reward you for that. But it requires not only 10x level of activity. Like right now, it's at what, 9, nine o'clock here? I'm just pulling in the house. I was, I was at the office Saturday, off the office on Sunday. Like it requires that amount of effort if you want to get that, that level of success. Uh, and not only that, but it requires – like you got to have a game plan. And not only do you got to work hard, but you got to have the right attitude. And, and you really got to want to help people solve these problems. You know what I mean? So my, yeah. my day, my day starts at, you know, whatever, seven o'clock, maybe six thirty, and, and I start doing, you know, leads, follow up, everything until about nine o'clock. And then I'm literally out with people. Like you got to have the pipeline full if you want to get access to these deals. So I'm, I'm up talking to people, you know, I'm out meeting with them at nine o'clock. Some days I don't, I don't get done talking to people till seven o'clock. Yeah. And if you're not, if you're not willing to do that, then if your pipeline's too small, you can't expect to get these deals out of it, right? So, and I right. fully recognize not everybody's going to do, you know, massive deals their first couple of months, but, but they got to realize the amount of actual effort it takes. If you look at a guy like, like, like The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, right? This dude's up at five in the morning and he's putting in massive workouts. But this guy doesn't need to put in massive workouts, I would say, because he already looks good. He's already achieved so much and accomplished so much. But he's the first guy out there, the first guy working out, right? So a guy like you who's already achieved so much and are so accomplished, you being out 10, 11 hours a day is what the difference is, right? You're doing 100 things, you know, uh, 10, 50% better than everybody else. You know, you're talking to people better. You care more about them. You're taking more activity. You're putting in the time, the effort. And it's the sacrifice. I mean, if you got a family, you got kids, you got to realize it's a sacrifice. If you're going to do it part-time, you're going to end up with part-time income and part-time results. Yep. And part-time. Yeah. Part-time or less results. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it's, it's funny, you know, it's, it's, it's the little, I tell, I tell all my students that it's really, it's a, it's the things you do on a daily basis. Like you got to get your habits and routines in order and you got to do those all day, every day, the same amount. If you guys haven't read, read, uh, read the slight edge or the compound effect talks about this, it's all about your daily habits and what you're doing every day. Like I was talking to Ben before the call, you know, nothing against you guys that are watching sports on the weekend, but if you're not happy with the amount of money you're making and you're watching sports all day, every day, Saturday and Sunday, and hanging out with your buddies drinking beer, and you know every stat of every hockey player, baseball player, football player, but you're bitching because you're not making enough money, dude, you need to, you, you need to stop it. Like, you, what are you doing? Like, I'm grinding. Like, I'm, I don't need to grind, but I love the grind. And you got, and me and Ben were talking about this, you got to love the grind. Like, I love to grind. Like, it, it's, it's, it's a way of life, you know, do I want to grind for the rest of my life? Probably not, but I'm still young. And if you want to, if you want to achieve the level of success in, in this business and wholesaling, you're going to have to, it, it's a grind, but it's an, it's a absolutely wonderful grind because it's a highly paid grind. I mean, Ben, you made, you made uh, what 20, I forgot how much money in that deal. And you had how many hours into it? it was like three hours and you made how much was that? 
I was three and a half hours on that deal, and it was twenty eight thousand dollars minus commissions, about twenty three, twenty four thousand dollars. So you made twenty three thousand dollars on three hours of work. But you yep. know, it was a hard grind to work for three hours, but it's a highly paid grind. So you know, it, it's it's just a different mindset, guys. It's I don't know of a better business model you can get into, especially in the real estate side, than starting off with wholesaling. You know, I can teach you guys how to market to motivated sellers, lock up deals, and then sell these deals to investors. So, you know, Ben is a, the epitome of what one of my successful students is. He's a grinder. The dude works seven days a week. He's going to make 50 grand in the first month. And now he's got a pipeline. Just wait till his pipe. So your pipeline, your pipe, people ask him, you know, how did you find this deal? So Christopher is, a, how did you find this wholesale to buy? The, or, no, I'm sorry. How, how do you find the wholesaler to buy the deal is what Christopher asks. You want to answer that? Yeah, sure. Um, for all of the deals you're going to get, hold on one sec. For all the deals you're actually going to get done, you got to realize how much time you got to commit to, to building up a network. You almost got to build it first. So it's not like you're going to get a deal under contract and go find a buyer right away. You got to be networking all the time. Like Chris, you even, you even made a point of that in hustle wholesale where if you're not networking, you know, daily, weekly with people talking to realtors, talking to other cash investors, you got to build this network up first. So it wasn't a matter that I had a deal and I had to go and find a buyer specifically. It was already had a group of buyers and I told them, Hey, if I have the right deal, would you guys buy it? And it's in yep. and being, being in constant contact with people and being willing to, um, being willing to put yourself out there and let people know what you're doing. Like, like this, this for me is not normal. I don't put myself out here and have these conversations on the web. It's just not a thing I do, but I recognize the value in putting yourself out there and letting people know what you're doing so they can help you, right? They can help you. Hey, I know a cash buyer or, Hey, I know of a property or, Hey, I know of something like you got to be able to collaborate and work with people, you know, for everybody's benefit. It's not about one dude who's a rock star. It's about the guy who keeps investing in other people, giving them value, helping them. And there's enough people that are willing to, to reciprocate that if you treat them with respect and you treat them right. Absolutely. You know, wholesaling, is, is, it is a, it's a people business. It's a, re, it's a relationship business and a marketing business is what it is. And the marketing is easy. The relationship building is the toughest part about this business because I, I find a lot of my students, are, you know, they, they're not willing to put themselves out there they're not willing to, you know, go out there and tell everybody what they're doing because they just worry about what people are going to think about them, you know, because we had this conversation, you know, at GrowthCon, you know, you asked me what I sh you know, should do. I said, dude, you need to do Facebook Live. You need to tell, you, tell everybody what you're doing, how you're doing, put yourself all over social media. You got to let people know what you're doing and how you're doing it. Yep, absolutely. And if you're not willing or you're scared, like I got a whole bunch of people here that I know, like a <laughs> whole bunch of people that normally I wouldn't put myself out there like this. But the reality is, you got to let people know what you're doing if, if you want to commit and do this in the right way. If, yeah. if you're a recluse and you don't tell people what you're doing, people can't help you. Like I see realtors on this group. I see a whole bunch of people that I'm going to call tomorrow and say, I know you're on that chat. You got a buyer for me. Or you got a deal for me. I appreciate it. Please help me out. Right? So it comes down to, I think everybody needs to realize that you got to network with as many people who are going to be able to help you grow your business as possible. And if you're not willing to do that, you're not willing to put in the time, it's going to be hard for you to get that, get that um, result that you're looking for. Right. Well, I tell my students obnoxious communication. When I say obnoxious, I don't mean like be really obnoxious, but like talk so much that you know, like it, it's, it's to the point where like, wow, like, and I don't shut up. Like everywhere I go, I'm telling people, Hey, Hey, I buy houses. Hey, you got any, you got any deals out there? I run, I run into real, Hey, where's all the deals at? Like you got deals for me? What's up? You got deals? I'm talking with people all day, every day. I'm networking with people that are in the trenches, you know, contractors, realtors, title attorneys, anybody that knows anything about real estate. And I'm asking them everywhere and telling them, hey, where's the deals? Or I'm telling everybody, hey, I buy houses. I want to brand myself as the guy that buys houses. That way, when people think about, you know, Ben or they think about Chris Rude, what do they think? Oh, that guy buys houses. Yeah. You know, it's a brand. You got to brand yourself. And, and, and it, this is what it's about. It's about networking and telling people what you're doing. That's right. And really putting yourself out there and willing to be vulnerable and let people know, you know, what you're all about. I would rather be transparent and have somebody say, man, I don't like this guy. He, he's too good looking or, uh, you know, he's, he's too arrogant or he, he talks too much or whatever than, than being afraid and not putting yourself out there 
and, and not letting people know what you're going to do because then you never got that opportunity. Like Grant Cardone says, you got to have attention and be able to sell people something. People got to know what you're up to. And yep. if you're afraid of what other people are going to say and what, what they're going to think, well, then just don't expect to have massive results. I think yeah. that's just the reality of the situation, right? Right. Ben, what do you think makes you, and this is kind of a question that I'm already, that you already know the answer to because we, we talked about this before I even, you hired me as a coach. I knew you were going to kill it and I told you why you're going to kill it. What, tell us why you think you're such a good wholesaler, why you're so good at real estate. What, what, is, what is the distinguishing factor that makes you so good at this? I think one of the biggest keys is I generally care to help people in their situation, right? Like I got a passion for helping people. So whether it's somebody looking to buy a home, somebody looking to sell a home, somebody looking to do any kind of real estate, like my daddy's a minister, right? So I grew up in the church. So for me being able to like go and help somebody and, and, and get deals done at the same time, you know, for me, it's a win-win scenario. So it doesn't feel like work to me, yeah. right? So I think for me, one of the biggest things is you got to have that driving passion that, that non-relenting motivation inside that's going to keep propelling you forward. If you're looking for external motivators, you, you, you're not going to be working till 10 o'clock at night. You're not going to be out there doing, doing deals and trying to, trying to put things together when everybody else is at home. You got to find that inside motivation. You got to find something that propels you forward. And I think that's the right. biggest thing for me is for me, I got a passion for helping people in one capacity or another. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. And would you say you have some good skills? Because I, I, dude, I think you got mad skills. <laughs> dude, like it's on your hat, man. Skills get the deals. You got to have skills. You got to have the people skills. You got to understand the process. You got to – really, skills is the most important part because you could know the do, you could know the paperwork. You could know, you know all of the tangibles. But you and I had this conversation about all of the intangibles, all of the stuff that you can't really quantify in words is somebody's effectiveness. And if your personal yep. effectiveness is great and you constantly look to improve yourself, that's what's going to give you an edge and that's what's going to give you a, an ability to do this. Yep. And, it's, and it's, it's about being resourceful. If you're full of skills, you're very resourceful because you can pull from your skill sets. And that the highest skill set you need in this is communication skills. And that's – I told Ben when I met him for the first time. I told his wife too. She was sitting on the side and I said, you guys are going to kill it. And I, and I knew that Ben was a, a great communicator. He really spoke well. He really listened well. I noticed when I talked, he listened. And that's one attribute of Ben that really, really stands out. When you talk to Ben, you know he's listening to you. Like, you can just – he listens. And you feel that. And he, uh, and he communicates really well. And he just got skills, man. And I told him and I told his wife, I said, look, you, I have no doubts in my mind that you guys are going to be killers at this. And sure enough, he, he comes out and knocks out the park and makes fifty grand in the first two months. So that's awesome, man. I, I'm I'm really just I'm 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 really happy that you're in the program and, and just um, ecstatic that that you're doing this. It's not a shock to me that you're doing what you're doing. I kind of knew it intuitively that you're gonna do this, um, dude. You're just I, I'm super happy for you and, and proud to to be able to coach you, man. You're uh, you're awesome, dude. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. For me, it's about staying humble, right? Humble wholesaler. You know, doing yeah. what we're doing, helping people, moving forward, you know, and, and there's, there's, there's abundance in life, man. Anybody who lives in scarcity, you know, I, and I know there's a lot of people that do. They, they, it's like a bondage. You got to realize there's, there's a ton of abundance out there. Nobody takes anything from you unless you let them take it. So if you live in that abundance, there's always deals. There's always people you can help. There's always things that will propel you forward if you're always looking for the positive, looking for the good. Like, I think that's why I got this elevated tone in my voice and I don't talk like this sometimes is because I'm overly energetic because I'm living in abundance, man. I got a lot of stuff going on and, you know, I got a lot of great families that we help with, with Forte real estate. I got a lot of, you know, other folks that we help with wholesaling, you know, now we're helping, you know, the guys with the coaching and giving them an advantage. Like, you know, the, your goals got to be greater than your fears. And for me, my goals are so huge that, that the fears and the noise and everything else starts to dissipate. Right. And, and I think that's what it is, is, is wanting to live in that abundance. And I'm not trying to make some rah, rah thing or, you know, trying to make it sound like it's some big spiritual ordeal. But, it, yeah. you know, I, I think your attitude is your biggest component. Yeah. Well, and you just you can hear guys, you can hear the fire in his voice. Right. I tell Ben this and I tell this is like you got to have some pep in your step. You got to be full energy. You got to be enthusiastic and you got to have a burning desire. And Ben has that burning desire. You can feel the energy like he talks. We talked about this in a coaching call, tonality. What's your tonality? Where are you at? Like, are you monotone? Are you, like, boring? And Like, dude, you got to get some energy, man. And when you talk to people, you got to be fired up. 
Yep. Yeah. You, you got to roll, man. You got to be ready to go. And you got to, you got to bring, you know, for me, it's like, you know, like, like they said at the 10X Growth Con, he said, you got to be, what, what was his um, definition? He said, you got to be a, an evangelical about your cause. Yes. And I come yes. from a Christian background. So for me, yeah. I'm already evangelical. I tell people, Jesus is the way, man. You know, God bless you, all that kind of stuff. That's just my vocabulary. So, you know, yeah. when, when he said, you got to be evangelical. So if my cause is to help people, my cause is to do deals, my cause is to help my family, to help my mom, then you got to be out there and you got to be yeah. preaching the good word, right? Yep. That was Ed Millett that said that you got to be an uh, evangelical about your message and, and what you speak about. Yep, I remember that was, that was a great, great message. But, and it's true, like he, he's on fire. You get to, when, when Ed was up there, I was like, man, he had so much passion. And that's what I was looking for, passion, guys. Yep. You got to have passion for this business. Anything yep. you do that's going to be successful. If you ain't got passion, dude, you ain't going to get that far because it, it takes a certain amount of effort and energy. And if you don't have passion, because passion will create energy. You know, That's right. if you don't have passion and you don't have a big, big goal, like you said, then you're not going to get very far because it takes such an exponential amount of effort and action to get to where you are or to where I'm at, that if you're not on fire inside and you're not like, Oh, I want to do this so bad that yep. It, yep. It, you just can't get there. Like, so it, it's, it's just awesome at, to, to watch you at, do that. Everybody can do this. Everybody can do wholesaling. Everybody can invest in real estate. Everybody can change the course of their future. Everybody can do this. It takes specific knowledge, but it takes a specific attitude and determination. And you're right. It takes skills. Like you can't expect to go out there without the proper skills and without knowing how this works and just, just expect to go ahead and, and do deals. Right. But if you're willing to put in the work and you get signed up, like you've been a great coach. I'll, I'll be honest. You know, I think the main reason is I had you because without having you as a coach and as a mentor, I don't think it would have worked out. I honestly don't like I got the motivation. I got the determination, but I was missing, you know, missing the right elements that you were able to coach me and, and walk me through. So yeah, I think, I, I think it's a combination and, and, and your, you know, your focus on making sure the students are successful like me. I think, I think it's huge. And, and I, for one, truly appreciate you. I do. No, you and I, Patty. I really appreciate that. You know, we, we put our heart and soul into our students because, I, you know, I feel like I have a vested interest when they hire me as a coach. And it just, man, it's just such amazing. You know, it's one thing to make a lot of money. Like I tell a lot of people, you know, they ask me, Chris, why do you coach? And you do so well with your wholesaling business and your real estate company. Look, my wholesaling business is an absolute blast. My real estate company is great. We have a bunch of real estate. We get passive income. But I can tell you this right now, what's really fulfilling and people say, man, you, full of, you, you may be full of shit, Chris. Yeah, you, you're probably lying. But this is true. I'm being truthful, speaking from the heart. It is more fulfilling to watch somebody that you train change their life and start making a lot of money through the, you know, what you're teaching them than it is to go and buy a property heavy, heavily discounted and flip it to an investor. That's, that's great. It. But to go and help somebody and watch you kill it or watch another one of my students kill it is so it, – it's, it, it's spiritual. Like it's, it's, uh, it's rewarding to me and it, it's filling. You know, yep. it's real feeling. So if that makes it, sense, but definitely, yeah. and it definitely makes you want to go and invest in other people. Right. So, so for me, I'm, I'm happy to invest in, in the other guys coming up in the group and, and people are reaching out to me all the time. And you know, how, how did you make this work? And how did you make that work? It's a very rewarding to be part of a group of people that really truly support each other, you know, and really want you to succeed. And, and that's what you've been for me. So that's what I like to be for other people. And it's that reciprocity. I think that really, that really makes a huge difference is it's not about just hand holding. I see somebody said, you know, hold your hand experience. It's not just about holding somebody's hand. It's about supporting them and what they want to do and then giving them, you know, the, the, the resources and, the, and, and helping them, you know, achieve that goal. And, and that's a huge, huge reward, right? Yeah. And, and you got to be upfront and honest. It ain't easy. You know, I don't tell anybody. When they thought it, nope. it ain't easy. It's a grind and it's work, but it's so rewarding. It's yep. a high paid grind. You can make a lot of money doing this. I mean, where can you make 50 grand in two months? I don't know too many. Dude, I didn't, I, when I owned four, I owned four quick loop car wash and mechanic shops at one time, over 30, over 35 employees. I never made 50 grand in two months. Yep. You know, and you know, it's it just, I, I don't know of a better business model. Some people ask in, what are the coaching packages? Rudy hit inbox me. I can tell you some of the coaching packages later. So I, I mean that in a good way. Let's see. Walk you through the pro. Yeah, that's right. Look, we, I'm going to walk you through the process. I'm going to help you do all this. Look, guys, if you have any questions, post them here for Ben or me. I'll answer some questions about, you know, wholesaling or 
real estate in general, you know, buy and hold, fix and flip. Um, Ben's done a, Ben, how many fix and flip deals have you done before you got into wholesaling? Uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, I would say we've done, uh, you know, about a hundred. Wow, that's that's a lot of flips. Yep. And it, as far as the uh, the time and effort invested into a flip versus the time and effort, for, you know, in, in wholesaling, you know, you, you could say that wholesaling is probably it, it, it's a higher level skill set, but it, it's 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 like a trade off, right? You need you need higher level skills to, to wholesale versus, you know, with, with flip and you, you pretty much just hire a contractor <laughs> and he does all the work. If the numbers make sense, you let you just kind of let him do it. But wholesaling, it's, it's all about people skills, organizing the deal, making the deal happen. And uh, it, it's, it's a little bit different, correct? Yeah, it's, it's, it's much different. The way I equate it is like if anybody buys stocks, right? I think I pulled this analogy before. Like when you buy a stock and if you buy it at a price that's higher than you should buy it, uh, you got time, right? Like as time passes, you know, that stock may go up and, and you might be able to sell it for a profit. But wholesaling is like buying options. Like you have a limited window in order to, to be able to go ahead and fulfill the, the deal that you're trying to put together. So I, I think it requires a lot more skill to do the wholesaling. I think it requires you to be the best version of yourself to do yes. wholesaling. 100%. And, and so, but it's also very rewarding. It's very rewarding and it's very quick paced. And, and you know what, there's, there's, um, there's backup strategies, right? So if you, if you're doing a wholesale deal and, and you can't, find an investor to sell it to, well, then you close on it and you can put it into a flip portfolio. So it really marries those kind of options very well to have something on the front end, which is the wholesaling component. Right. So, yeah. Michael, it's, it's, uh, Michael asked a question. He says, um, how far should, excuse me, how far should you wholesale from your area? So, Michael, that's a great question. You know, I always tell my students, master your backyard first. You know, all this virtual wholesaling stuff and trying to go two states out or four or five hours out. You know, go ahead and do some deals in your backyard first. Learn your market. That, this is so key, guys. You got to learn your market. Like, I, I've learned my market so good, and I'm sure Ben knows the same thing. Like, I can go to, into a neighborhood. I know what it, what's going to sell per square foot. I know what, you know, what average rent is in that area. It's just because I know my market, right? Now, if I go into a brand-new market, I just – I don't have the – the leverage I would that I have in my own market because I know the numbers in just about every neighborhood. So master your backyard. Would you agree with that? Yeah, that's fully, I fully agree with that. I think you got to know as much as you can about your market, about your buyers before. Like I, I was fortunate to have been, you know, working in this market for a few years before I jumped into this. So it gave me time to learn. But if you don't have time, like go find a realtor, go find somebody competent, somebody who's experienced and ask them, sit them down, buy them a coffee and say, hey, teach me what are the best neighborhoods. You know, teach me this. So you, you got to be willing to study your area. know it like a book. Like there's areas of yeah. this town. You give me an address. I'll tell you what it's worth based on the address. Yep. Within, exactly. within 10 or 20 grand, I can tell you the value of that property. But it, it comes with you being so focused and making sure that you're really um, – learning the neighborhoods, learning the values, learning what an ARV is, knowing exactly what goes into a deal, you know, before you just jump in. Yeah. It's not yeah. just shuffling paperwork. Like there's a, there's a process here that you got to follow. Yeah. K Kagan Sharp says a flip is like a NASCAR race and a wholesaling sale deal is like a dragster. I would hundred percent agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It that sound about right. Yep. And Sanad says less risk than doing flips. Absolutely. It is definitely less flips. I mean, less risk to do wholesale versus flips. Keegan says, what is the most effective way to find deals? Now, Keegan, that's, that's a, that's the million dollar question. You know, a lot of, I get these questions all the time. Hey, what's the best marketing channel? The best marketing channel is the one that works the best in your market. <laughs> so that's right. That's you, right. You got to find, you know, there's no magic pill. Like you got to find out which, what, what, what is that marketing channel? For me, you know, it, it's it's banded signs, it's uh, PPC. Um, those really are really effective in my market. I crush it with that. For some other people, it's direct mail. You know, Ben uh, kills it with direct mail, don't you? Are, are postcards, what are you doing, Ben? Yeah, postcards, mailers. The reality, Chris, is I'm doing everything all the yeah. time, right? Yep. And and that's the that's the answer. Everybody wants to know what's the secret. Where are you getting all these deals, man? Right? Like Grant Cardone. What's up, man? Where are you yeah. getting them deals, man? The deals yep. come 
from you being out in the community doing everything in your ability to find them. Yeah. And that's think, what it is. Yeah, it, it is. And I, I would say I get a lot of deals organically from just branding and word of mouth from networking. Tons, Tons. of deals. I, yep. I, got a deal, I got a deal today, by the way. I told you that before we got the call. That I had a killer day. I got uh, two or three deals in a contract. But I got a mobile home park. The guy paid 1.1 1. 1 for it. I got in a contract for $600,000. Wow. Yes. He's burned out. Like he, he, wow. he had tons of money. He bought this park. He bought this park, I think, three or four years ago. Trying to let it go and just didn't want to mess with it because there's too much headache. He's unloading it to me for $600,000. Wow. Know? And I got this. How? Word of mouth. This, this, I didn't pay, I paid zero, zero for this deal. Mm-hmm. It was from a, a, a guy of a guy of a guy that knew me who was a landscaper who, who gave me this guy's number that said, Hey, this guy's selling this park. I know I'm telling him I sent you, you know, so stuff like that, guys, it's just, it's just a matter of networking and, and really just being in a know and telling everybody what you do and, and how you do it. So we got some more questions, Ben. Bill said, Yo. when first starting wholesaling, what information should you start educating yourself on first? Ben, that's a great question. The fundamentals, guys, you got to you got to know the fundamentals. And the fundamentals I would say is, you know, it's the art of buying low and selling high, negotiating, rapport building, marketing 101, which is just the, you know, basic marketing skills. Just learn the fundamentals, right? And and you know what my market. biggest skill? My biggest yep. skill, Chris. By the way, shout out to my brother Johnny who's on. He just had a baby this morning, so love you, bro. Congrats on your beautiful baby. Um, I think the biggest skill you need to master is the skill of being able to talk to people and get to them on their level and being able to really communicate and come into a situation willing to provide as much possible value, being able to sit down with somebody and say, how can I help you today? Right? I think that's a massive overlooked skill that people just don't have is they're lacking that one-on-one communication. They're not building that rapport. There's no magic to, you know, to getting the deals. You know, the magic comes in being able to solve people's problems. Yes. And then, and then they're willing to give you the problem. I've had people, I had a lady today, and I told you the story. Um, she sold me her home instead of selling it to another wholesaler for less money because she said she liked me better. That was yep. her answer. I said, why, why are you selling it to me? She said, because I like you better. I like what you're doing. I like what your company does. I like, I like your mission. You know, I like you as, a, as an individual, and I like the fact that you asked me when I first walked in, how can I help you other than buying your house? Is there anything else I can do for you? Yeah. So I think that's what it comes down to is being able yeah. to be a problem solver. People skills and problem solving. Yeah, Bill, to, to answer your question, that would be the short and skinny dude. You, you need people skills is going to be the number one. It's a common thread. I've watched a lot of students come and go. The, the ones that do the best got the best people skills. They know how to talk to people. You know, that it's as simple as that. Anybody can generate leads. Anybody can market and, and you know, get motivated seller leads. But you got you got to have the people skills and, and you can develop it over time. You know, you just got to work at it and be willing to put yourself out there and, and really care about people and have good intentions. When you really care about somebody and have good intentions and you're genuine, they feel that and you connect. And yep. they want to do business with you. But people know when you bullshit them, when you go in there and yep. you're talking about their house and you're just trying to get their house for cheap. Yeah, we want their house for cheap. But if you tell them why. Look, ma'am, I'm not a full retail buyer. I want to help you just as much as I would like you to help me. If we can come to an agreement, I can buy your house for this price. I'll better help you get out of this house within two to four weeks. Everybody's happy. You win, I win. I'll get. I better rehab this house and make it a great house for somebody else. For somebody else, and you'll get your money and you can go on to your next house, right? It's like that. You know, it's as simple as that. Just having a conversation, right? Yep. And you know what? It's it's like any other business. People look at it like it's a magical unicorn. Like you go to Starbucks or Tim Hortons or you go to another coffee shop. And you go in and you pay three bucks a coffee, four bucks a coffee. Why? Why do you pay four bucks a coffee? You know you can make coffee at home. You know you can go pick up a coffee at the gas station for a dollar. Like why do you go to your favorite places and why do you do business with those companies? It's because they provide you with a value, right? When you go to Starbucks, they got a nice atmosphere. They treat you well. You know, they put little frothy stuff on your coffee. You know, they they put all that fattening stuff right on top so that you got to eat the fattening bit to get to the actual caffeine bit, right? But yeah, it, it's no different than any other business. You got to walk in and, and be willing to provide value over and above, over and above the basic, because that's what too many people are doing is they're giving out basic value. You know, how much does house cost? I'll give you this much. That's all I can pay. See you later. Call me if you're ready. <laughs> right. And that's then I go and I'm like, what's up? You know, 
How can I help you? How yep. can I provide you with some value today? Yep. Isn't, you're not conning people. Nobody who sells you their house is like, oh my God, I could have got more. I got people who could have got more and they gave us exactly you know, what we wanted because they realized the value in working with us and with me. Right. Yep. Tom says, what is the best first step to get into wholesaling? Completely new to real estate. Tom, hire Hustle me. wholesale, brother. Hustle wholesale. That's the first step. Hire me as a coach, man. I'll, I'll help you crush it. I mean, you know, you, you can figure this out on your own, but you, you're going to skip the learning curve 10, 10x or 100x if you hire me as a coach. Entry, bring chocolate. Yep. Senat says, bring chocolate. Yo, Senat, I brought a guy a uh, Hungarian sausage last week, and this guy loved me so much, I gave him sausage, he gave me the deal. So it doesn't have to be chocolate. It can be some sausage. <laughs> Holly Vaughn says, do you recommend getting your real estate license first before joining wholesale program? Uh, not necessarily, Holly. I mean, it doesn't hurt if you have your license. Um, my wife has her license. I definitely think either you or your husband or wife should have the license because a lot of leads that come through are not going to be qualified wholesale deals. Most of them won't be. But a good bit of them will want to list on MLS and, you know, they're, they're going to want close to full retail. And if you have your license, then, you know, you can you can have that option and list it for them and get a commission on that. So it doesn't hurt. Bill yeah. Hurt. And, and just to clarify, in Canada, it doesn't help you having your license at all, because if you're a realtor, you have a lot of requirements and guidelines that you have to follow. And, and there's a lot of disclosures and stuff like that when you're a realtor here. So there's realtors who do wholesaling. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a ton of great realtors who are doing it. But in some ways, it's going to limit your ability, you know, because of those disclosures and stuff. Like you're seen as a professional. So you have to, from what I understand, because I'm not a realtor, but you have to inform the buyer of the, of the, of the seller of the fair market value. And you got to do, you know, several things over and above what a typical buyer would do. Yeah. So, so there's it, a pro and con to both. Yeah, right? yeah. so it, it's different. It's definitely different in Canada. So Bill Broussard, he's asking, Ben, where do you find your buyers? Where you, well, where you find your buyers, Ben? You asking me? Yeah, yeah. With that ben, I, that's why I'm on this call, man. I got deals. TakeMyDeal.ca. <laughs> TakeMyDeal.ca. There's a whole yeah. bunch of buyers right in this group. I see you, realtors in Windsor. I recognize you. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, Bill, you know, I'm going to answer that question for you. Bill, they're everywhere, Bill. You just got to go shake the trees, my brother. You got to go network with realtors. Go to uh, go to the Section 8 office. Go to sheriff sales. Go to go to auction. Go to the foreclosure auctions. All those guys are investors. Go get their name and number. Save them in your phone. Just shake the trees. Just go talk to everybody. And everybody just asks people, hey, do you know any real estate investors? Go talk to people that got a lot of cash in the bank who are not real estate investors. I've, I've converted tons of people in my town who weren't investors. Now they're like real estate gurus because I took them from being business owners, you know, owning businesses, having cash and not knowing what to do with it to turn them into investors. Because now they have, you know, they have a, you know, a method that now they can take their cash and put it in deals that compound and double their money. So, so Bill, let, let me add one thing there where, you know, where do, uh, you know, where do uh, guys without a job in, in Arizona go to get a job if, if they're not legal and they don't have papers? They go outside of the Home Depot at 7 o'clock in the morning where all the other dudes are who have jobs, right? So if you're an investor and you're looking for cash buyers, you got to find out where the buyers are at. Yep. They're not going to be hanging out at home. You got to go to real estate groups. You got to network with people. You got to call realtors. You got to find out where they're at and connect with them. You, they're not going to come to you. Nobody's going to come to you and say, hey, I'm a cash buyer. Let me go ahead and get you some money. Get you paid right quick. <laughs> That's right. Sanad says, put more offers and more follow-up yields more success. Absolutely. 100%. You got to make offers everywhere. I make an, I leave an offer and I tell, I, I give an offer and a property on, on every property, property that I go visit, every single one of them. And I follow up with them until they block me. Tell me, hey, you kick rocks like you're normal. That's, that's what it is. You got, you got to, you got to follow up. You got to be a follow-up machine. I, I agree with that. Sanad. Michael says, if you're new to wholesaling, never done a deal. Would you go all in, give up your day job, or slowly work your way in? Michael, I would slowly work my way in. I mean, if you, dude, if you got a day job, my brother, and, and you're paying your bills, you got a family support, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend. Also, I don't want to discourage you from doing that, but I, I definitely wouldn't. Want to, you can do it on the side. We've got tons of people doing it on the side that have full time jobs that are making an extra five, ten grand a month wholesaling in my program with full time jobs. Michael but if, said, but if you, let, let me let me add a point. But if you're living at home in your mama house, right, 
you got to go all in, brother. Go sleep on the couch, and you gotta you gotta grind it out. Like, I don't make I don't want to make it sound like passively you can make this work. Like, if you got a job, yeah, you can scale into it. You'll do a couple of deals, but if you want, you know, massive success quickly, it's gonna take a commitment level probably beyond any like anything that that requires greatness anything you're trying to accomplish play an instrument build a business anything you want to do is going to require massive amounts of commitment work. and action work yep. you got to put in the work so you'll get some deals done you know in the part-time world but i think the bigger question is you know how much of your free time are you spending doing nothing right you got you got an hour or two hours a day you could you could fully commit to this i'm sure you could find it somewhere between gray's anatomy and uh you know, you know, what's that other show? The Walking uh, Dead. Desperate Housewife, The Walking Dead. Like, you know who The Walking Dead are? All the investors who can't find no deals. That's who The Walking Dead are. They're walking around like this. You know? uh, it's because they got no deals. They, they got a Walking Dead deal. That's, that's what I'm saying. So I'm sitting there like a sniper. I'm, I'm the dude with the crossbow, right? What's his name, Daryl? I'm that dude. I'm just sitting there. Killing the deals. That's it. That's what it takes. I love it. I love it. So Patrick says, listen to their pain points and help them get through it. 100%, Patrick. You, you got to find the pain points and, and find out what's, what they're suffering from and, and solve that problem. Because a lot of these people are going to be hitting up or going to be motivated to stress homeowners and they're going to have some pain. They're going to have some problems. You got to figure out how to help them. You know, you're a problem solver in this business. You, you're, you're, I can't tell you how many times I've had to go bring diapers to homeowners that had no cash and they, they say, look, Chris, I, I really need to sell my house, but if you can give me some cash now, that really helped to get by. I have no diapers to my kids. I mean, I don't know if you've been through that yet, Ben. I've been that, through that a few times. You know, you, you got to help these people. You got to help them solve their problems. Every time, every time. If, if you're not willing to be a problem solver, if you're not willing to be a coach, if you're not willing to be, you know, you know, I, I tell people like, you know, I'm a really high paid counselor. I'm really well paid counselor. That's that's a great, great analogy. God, let's say that again, Ben. Say that again. I would. I'm that's one of the best analogies of a wholesaler. Say that again, Ben. Yeah, I, I'm saying that I'm a really well-paid counselor. That's what it is. You yes. sit down, you counsel with people, you help them in their problems, and they're willing to pay you for it. How much they pay you depends on the, the situation. Every circumstance is different. But you, if you don't walk in being the guidance counselor, you, you're not likely to get as many deals and your level of effectiveness isn't going to be up here if you don't walk in with problem solver mode yeah you got to be a good listener 100 percent. that's that's probably one of the best analogies i've heard as a professional wholesaler you got to be willing to be a, a counselor that's that's right that's, yeah we're gonna have to put that on a hat then that's right i gotta i gotta get me a hat dude i ain't got no hat <laughs> you know which one so so uh, James says, how do you strategize where you put your bandit signs? James, dude, anywhere that's high traffic, I like around schools, around daycares, Walmart, Target, high traffic areas, four-way stops, busy neighborhoods. Dude, you just got to get creative. Just think of – just be – become the homeowner. Be, be, like be them in your mind like they're driving around. If I was somebody that's going through pre-foreclosure, I need to sell my house fast, what's the best place to find to put a sign? And that's how you do it. You just reverse engineer it, right? Yep, So absolutely. Bill says – I've been on the phone. I've been in phone sales for ten years, man. Hopefully that will help. Awesome, Ben. So let's see. What's up, Dan? Dan says, "What's up, Chris? What's up, Dan?" The guys, if you're not sharing, inviting, please do. This is some knowledge. I wanted to bring on Ben. This guy's a super talented guy from Windsor, Windsor, Canada. Windsor, Ontario, Canada. What's up? What's up? I mean, this guy is crushing it in my program, and I, I wanted you guys to hear his story. But he, he's a uh, He's a he's a professional. This guy is, is super talented. Got tons of people skills. So if you if you're just getting on this live, go back. There we go. Skills get the deals. That's right. <laughs> I love it. Go back on this live and, and re-listen to what Ben said. The dude made fifty grand in less than or right at two months. So Sonat says bringing chocolate to your appointment. Ha ha. Yep. Do you do you leave your bandit signs out or do you take them down on Sunday night? It depends on what part of the country you're from, Keegan. I got students all over the country. Some some parts of the country you, you can't put bandit signs, man. They take them down the next day. Uh, they give you a fine. You just got to figure out where you can't and can and can't put them. You got to learn your market. So now it says, "Haha, I'm from Croatia." Wow, we got Croatia in the house. That's What's up, Croatia? Yes, sir. 
Let's see. Do you take your banner signs down on Sunday? No, I don't take them down. I, I do because it's the Lord's Day, so I don't mess around with that. I ain't trying to get stricken down. <laughs> All right. Roger says, what's up? Yep, that's right. You're limited as a realtor in Canada. So it looks like you got a lot of Canadian people on here. Dude, I got all my friends up here. I got, I see all kinds of dudes. Matthew, Tetley, Roger, James. These are all guys that are in Canada that can vouch for the legitimacy of what I'm doing. Because these are right. guys who know. These are guys who have been to, been to my office and see what we do. And these guys yeah. know I'm crushing it late nights. And yeah. that's why they're on here. They're trying to get the secrets. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, and look, Roger James just made a good point. He says, you have to disclose your intentions. Absolutely. Roger, I tell people, like, on my, like when I get to their house, hey, you know, listen, I'm here to buy your house. I'm not a full retail buyer. I'm an investor. I have to get your house heavily discounted. However, I'm going to solve your problem. I'm going I'm to get you your money fast. I'm going to make your problem go away. We ain't going to have to show it, you know, 100 times uh, if you would, if you were listening with a realtor. You know, I'm going to solve your problem. And you, you just tell them like that. And you can just up front and genuine and honest and you tell them what you're doing. It's, it's usually not a problem for them to sell you the house cheap. So let's see. A few more questions. No family, single, no kids. Life a lot of own my own house and car. <laughs> That's Michael. Actually. He, he says, I, I have no family. I'm single, no kids. But then, Michael, dude, that may be a reason they just go all out then because you ain't got that much to lose. I mean, like you have a family you feed into. If you want to go all in, it may not be a bad idea. Matthew says, this is a great video. Thanks for doing this, guys. Anytime, Matthew. I, I appreciate that. Um, Bill, when knocking on doors or cold calling, how would I present myself with no experience or company, especially they ask? So if if you're door knocking or cold calling, you're just up front and honest. Hey, you know, this is uh, Bill. You know, I'm an investor in, in this area looking to buy houses. If you're interested, I'd love to make you a cash offer in your house. Would you be interested in, in possibly taking an offer in your house? Simple as that. It don't have to be some long, drawn out. Just be up front and honest. Yeah. And let, let me add one point there, Chris. So buying these deals. So we, we also manage a mortgage company here in, in, in Windsor, Canada. Right. Um, you, if you got a purpose for what you're doing, like for us, it's about putting people in a house. At the end of the day, our biggest goal and our biggest mission is to actually put people in homes. And that's my biggest thing, because I recognize that home ownership is not not available to some people who deserve it. So for me, I have to go in and be the most effective version of myself when we're going in to buy homes, because at the end of the day, a family on the other side of that equation relies on me to be completely effective. You got to realize who your end client. I, I have people, there's people here watching right now that are, that are mortgage clients of ours. What's up, Castle and Browns? What's up, all the Brown family? Uh, all these people, like they rely on us to go in there and make sure that we can get the price we need on these homes whether it's wholesaling, whether it's whether it's flipping, whether it's providing mortgages, you just got to be the most effective version you can be. It, it doesn't make any sense to go in there and be be half of what you can do. There's yeah. no value, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, at 100%. There's no reason to go in there and, and try to, you know, lie to them or mislead them and tell them, you know, and not let them understand that. Just be upfront. Hey, I'm an investor. I need to get your price for cheap. You know, Absolutely. And just tell them, yeah, I mean, I, I need to buy your house for $0.60 cents on the dollar. It's the only way this is going to work, but I'm going to solve your problem. Yep, so, absolutely. Keegan says, I quit my career of 15 years, closed my 401k, and jumped in with both feet. That's awesome, dude. That, that's, that takes a lot of courage. Hats off to you for having enough courage and balls to do that, man. Rudy says, Chris, I'm on Cardone University. What section slash course would you guys recommend for me to look into talk slash communicate with the sellers? Negotiating skills is negotiating a main part of the deal with the seller. Absolutely. Card on you is is not necessarily. I mean, it's going to help you, but wholesaling is a little bit more niche. Card on you is more less made for, for for car salesmen. I wouldn't say there's a negotiating tool. I, I've been through Card on you. Ben, would you say there's a negotiating tool that you can specifically use from Card on you to, to apply to wholesaling? Absolutely, yeah. I so I've been on Card on you platform, and especially the first, like if, if you're going to go through the first section of videos. The, there's there's probably four or five top notch videos on being able to you know to do this effectively. Building the rapport is a huge element, and being able to even walk up and and shake somebody's hand and look them in the eye and and your body language, all of these things are are part of this process. So I would I would highly advise people to get on Cardone U. If you're not on it, you're probably missing you're missing your effectiveness. So what's up, Marky Mark? What's up, Castle and Brown? How you doing? By the way. The Brown family, if you notice, I got a beautiful black baby in my hands on my Facebook profile. 
That's one of the brown babies. So let me <laughs> clarify, that is not my child. I am not the daddy. That's but it's awful. such a beautiful child, I had to get a picture. That's I want to so adopt that baby. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Matthew so. Tetley says, 100% he kills it in our local scene. He works like a machine. You hear that, huh, Ben? Thank you, Matthew. I appreciate that, Brettley. Brettley Tetley, that's who that is. Rondi says, did he flip inside his Roth IRA and pay no taxes or the IRS preferred preferred way and paid tax on the flip? I, I didn't pay any money to, that, to the IRS, and I never will, and they ain't never going to find me because I live in Canada, and they don't reside here. <laughs> That's right. Angel, what's up, Angel? Let's see. Um, okay, so I think that's about it, guys. We've been on here for a good while. So, guys, if you're interested – you know, if, especially if you're from Canada, if you're interested in the program, send Ben an inbox. Ben can help you get started in wholesaling. Um, matter of fact, me and Ben are going to be partnering up soon, and we're going we're gonna to be rolling out a program to help Canadian students because my program is tailor-made for the American student who lives in the States. Ben's, you know, Ben's figured out a way to do this in Canada because it's a little bit different. You can't – it's not done the same way. Ben's had to, like, you know, kind of – make some adjustments and really figured out and he figured out how to do this legally in Canada. So if you're from Canada and you're interested in, and you're on this feed inbox Ben and let's get you rocking and rolling. You know, it Ben can really, we can, we're going to, we're going to show you how to crush the Canadian market. Ben, you have anything to add to that? Yeah. I just want to encourage everybody on the call. Um, there's, there's a ton of opportunity if you're willing to put in the work and you're willing to provide value to people. Just keep in mind, though, that the ones who do the best are the ones who are really not just putting in the work, but they have the right attitude and they have the skills. Like, Chris, skills get the deals, man. That's why I'm wearing this kind of frumpy looking hat. <laughs> I'm going to have to get you one of mine. I got the, the better Dude, one. Dude, you got the good one, man. I got this, like, dollar store. Like, I got to wear it sideways just to look all right. You know what I mean? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do one of these. But look, look at that. Bam, chrisrude.com. Chrisrude.com, babe. So, but it comes down to if you can really get the skills and you can hone in and, and have the right attitude, you can be completely effective in this program. If you're, gonna, if, if you're not going to focus on developing yourself, like I tell, I tell some guys, you know, in the coaching, I mentioned it last week and I said, when you go in, you got to be willing to be vulnerable with the person and tell them, like I tell people stuff, that I don't even tell my own family because we don't have those kind of moments in my family. It's like, did you make the cabbage rolls? What are you doing over there? Without the Southern accent. <laughs> but you got to be willing to be vulnerable with people and be willing to share with them. And if you're not, well, then you're just not going to connect with them on a level to actually help them. Like people want to sell you their home. And I would even make a case that says that people want to sell you their home at a discount. And the reason they want to sell you their home at a discount is because if they believe in you, they want you to do well. They want you to be a positive impact on other people. So people would rather leave money on the table and sell it to a guy who they like and trust and value than to sell it to somebody else just for more money. The amount of money isn't the ultimate goal for sellers. I know, I know it sounds crazy and people are going to say, what are you talking about? Everybody wants as much money as they can. And, and to a point, you're right. But the majority of people will leave money on the table to give it to a guy sell the home to a guy that they respect and trust. And a guy who's got a mission and a purpose and an attitude of humbleness, appreciation, gratitude, people will leave you money. People will literally give you their equity for that. And then you can take that and wholesale it. You can help another family. You can do a lot with it. But you got to be open if you want to receive. Too many people go in and they're, they're doing this and they're trying to you know, they're, they're trying to secure the best possible deal and they're trying to squeeze the homeowner it's, it's a two-way street. I've given homeowners sometimes more than what they ask. And why would I do that? It's not always about the money, man. You got to talk with people, find out what they need, and provide them with that value. I, I gave a lady like five grand more than she asked me one time. And she said, why would you give me five grand more? I said, honestly, the truth is you asked me for too little. And, and you just told me you need the money to move and you need the money to, you know, to do something else with your family. And you don't have first and last for the place you're going to be at. So why don't I just give you some more money? Is that okay? And she is blown away that somebody would offer her more than what she asks. It's a two-way yep. street. It works back and forth. If you're genuine, honest, sincere, people will be genuine, honest, and sincere. If you're there 
to rob them blind and to make a buck and to steal their house for next to nothing. I don't know what you expect. So this is, like I said, you, you can either be the best paid counselor or you can be a counselor who works for free because you ain't getting no deals. <laughs> but either way, you got to counsel somebody and either way, you got to help somebody. That's the only way this works. Yep, 100%. Yeah, man. So, Ben, where, where can they find you at? You, you can find you on your Facebook. and Yeah, you and can you find me on my Facebook at Ben Mearson. You can look me up there. Uh, pretty soon you're going to find me on, uh, you know, Ben, a.k.a. The Humble Wholesaler, which is going to be our, our Facebook, YouTube page and everything else. So just look out for Humble, Humble Wholesaler, because that's the kind of guy that I, I, I want to be as a humble, respectful guy. But you can find me on Ben Mearson. Look me up. Hit me up if you got questions. Just get at me. If you're if you're in Canada and you're wondering if this program works or if there's, you know, you know how how it's set up differently from the U.S., <clears throat> I got you. I got it figured out. You know, Chris gave me so much value in giving me the right motivation and the right tools and resources to be able to fulfill this opportunity here in Canada. And now I'm on a mission to find dedicated people who want to make a difference in their own lives, help people, provide them with value, you know, and grow in this wholesale business. If you're looking to just rip people off, don't call me. I ain't trying to help you. I got no business working yep. with you. But if you're looking for win-win solutions to help sellers, help yourself, you know, grow a business, because this is a business. It's not just a hobby. You got to treat it like a business. And if you're willing to do that, then call me or hit me up, PM me, whatever, and, and we can connect. But the first step people got to do is they got to get signed up. They need they need the program and the, and the coaching and the methodology that's in that's in hustle wholesaling. And if yep. you can't, I mean, if you're not willing to go through that, then don't call me. Don't call me for freebies if you're not going to put in the work. That's all I ask. That's awesome. So guys, if you're from Canada and you want to do some big things in the wholesale base, hit up Ben, inbox Ben. I'm going to, we're going to be rolling out a Canadian version of my program together and uh, we're going to help you crush it. We're even going to have a, a, a program that, you know, even if you feel like you, you know, if, if you don't even understand real estate or even wholesaling, you, you can you can start with no experience, no knowledge, nothing, and get into this business and, and crush it. So hit up uh, Ben, inbox him. Ben, you have anything, last words before we go? I'm just saying I don't only hold babies. I hold puppies, kittens, birds, <laughs> pigeons, whatever you got. I'll hold anything. Because <laughs> I, I, I love everybody. Look at Patty. Patty, she says you kill me. <laughs> I love you, Patty. You guys, you guys are awesome. Yeah, I, I just want to encourage you guys, if you're at all curious, how, how can they get signed up for um, well, Hustle Wholesale? Just go to Hustle Wholesale on the Facebook page, or how can uh, they get signed up here? Yeah, so what they can do, they can um, they can inbox you if they're from Canada. They can go to chrisroot.com and book a call with me. Um, if you're on this live feed and you're from the States, go to chrisroot.com, book a call. Me and my team will answer the phone. We'll see if we can help you and uh, it, it, it's got to be a good fit for you. You got to have the time to do it. You got to have a marketing budget. Yes. I'm, I'm going to charge you. It's not free. Um, you know, I, I've got to, you got to have some, you know, in the game. Right. And um, you know, and if you don't have any cash right now to invest in yourself, you know, hit me up on YouTube, go subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on, on at Chris Rude entrepreneur, my fan page. And you can press the follow button at Chris Rude. I'm, I'm maxed out at friends right now, but you can go to the follow button and you can follow me on Instagram at real estate rude so but by the, by, by the way i'm not maxed out on friends i could use a few so yeah, yeah i need some it. friends man you guys need to become my friend i'm lonely over here you know yeah, what i'm hit saying up, hit ben up uh, where can they find you on instagram you're gonna find me at, at humble wholesaler in about 20 minutes because i'm about to go put it up live so humble wholesaler <laughs> on instagram that's where i'm gonna be facebook uh humble wholesaler youtube humble wholesaler or, or just find me on, on my Facebook page at Ben Mearson, and I'll set you up. But I, I love to help you guys. I see a whole bunch of Canadians and Windsorites in here, and I appreciate you guys for being on. Um, this is probably the first time you're seeing some kind of, you know, hustle wholesale or any kind of wholesale program. It's the first time you're seeing me do a Facebook Live because I'm pretty quiet. But now <laughs> now I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm hugging dogs. I'm, I'm kissing puppies. I'm holding babies. <laughs> and I'm helping people and making a difference, and, and we're blowing up, and we're doing great. That's awesome. 
All right, guys. Well, we're going to call it a night. Go to chrisrude.com. Book a call with me. Like, subscribe. Follow me on YouTube. Yeah, like I said, if you don't have any cash, you can go subscribe to Ben. He's going to drop some free content on YouTube at Humble Wholesaler that he's about to start his YouTube video. Or you can follow me at Chris Rude. Tons of free videos. I've got about 90 videos of free content. So anyway, guys, um, chrisrude.com. Book a call. We'll talk to you next time. Ben, I appreciate you coming on here, dude. I, You're the I appreciate you, brother. And I appreciate everybody who took the time out. So just keep it yep. humble. Keep working hard. And get at us, man, if you want to get some wholesaling because – Life is beautiful. That's right. All right, man. Y'all have a good night. Peace. Take care, y'all.